skiing earlier this morning up to the mangroves. It's November of 2019 and the girls are exploring the town in Puerto Rico of La Paguera. We find the tourist town mostly deserted and figure it must be a national holiday. The most famous thing about this anchorage is one of the few places where you can swim in the mangroves and have good visibility. And next we're going to sail to try to find the mythical place called Gilligan's Island. We do not have lizards and iguanas wandering around in Canada, so I am endlessly fascinated with them. I think it's just the most cute thing ever. We managed to find a resort lobby where we can get some free Wi-Fi so I can check the weather and Elena can text with friends. Then we head home. morning up to the mangroves in uh, Cayo Cacao or whatever and it was kind of cool swimming in the mangroves with clear water instead of muddy water lots of little fish and stuff to see it's the local party area we're gonna try going over to the next reef over and have a look at those mangroves we'll bring you with us this time we didn't bring a camera for the earlier ones but we'll show them to you this time the thing that makes this place spectacular diving is that the mangroves are exposed to the open ocean, so the water doesn't get muddy, but it's rather fresh seawater washing through constantly, like mangroves that found purchase on sandbars. Elena is infinitely curious and there's clearly some kind of touristy area so she just cannot resist. We have to land so she can find out more. It seems to just be like a, a fenced off, like a, like a screened off tourist swimming hole or something. It doesn't seem like anything special but all the signs are in Spanish. What an absolutely lovely inner lagoon. I understand why the tourists are drawn here. I have a lantern and a fishing rod. Oh, It's not exactly crystal clear water, but you can see it's much clearer than you would get in a normal muddy mangrove swamp. One of the best privileges of the cruising life in the Caribbean is that you get to go swimming. You get to go into snorkel into beautiful places and just sort of observe the natural marine life and it's endlessly fascinating.
I am always on the lookout for apex predators like sharks and barracudas that might be hunting these waters. There are a lot of weird looking things that live and grow in the ocean. It was fun. We spent a lovely day wandering around to different little islands, checking out different mangroves, and just sort of swimming here and there with the marine life. But eventually we headed back to Wild Child. Something I had started doing was turning on the GPS tracker on the Garmin and linking it to my website so you guys can always follow where Wild Child is. Look at how interesting those clouds are, huh? sleep last night. I don't feel really good. I have a headache. My body hurts. I'm not thinking clearly, but we gotta leave to make the next jump to Gilligan's Island. Nobody's sure why they call it Gilligan's Island, apparently. So we're on the mooring ball. We're gonna try to raise the main because the winds are light here in the bay. And then we gotta follow our track out through all the different underwater unmarked reefs. We'll just follow the same track out that we took in. And then we're going to make a 10 mile sail to Gilligan's Island. We should be anchored down by noon. Those clouds along shore worry me like they're building into something. I might have a thermal lift to them. But I guess we'll find out when we get there. My plan is to follow the same track out that we used to come in because we know that it has to be good. But notice on the chart plotter how it says that's less than 1 foot 6 deep. This area is 3 foot 3 deep. The charts are wrong, and it's very nerve-wracking to sail into an area that the chart plotter says your keel is going to hit the bottom. It takes bravery, confidence, and courage. forecast is wrong again. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. Usually you have no wind when you're very close to shore because you're protected by the mountains. But usually once you get away from the mountains, you know, get a couple miles offshore, you usually have wind again. There's no wind. It's dead calm and the forecast is not for dead calm. The forecast is for 10, 10 to 15 knots of the usual trade winds. We have zero wind to sail in. Right now we're just creating a parent wind. It is flipping calm out here. We may end up motoring the whole way, which is not my preferred mode of travel. But with no wind, maybe it'll pick up. Like it's only 8.30 in the morning. Maybe in the next hour or two we'll get some thermal effect. We'll see. 